What you're about to see is a real-life story. Taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game. The carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock. Captain Braddock. Ready. This case is one of the important in our files, because to a greater or lesser degree, it happens to hundreds of people every single day of the year. People who, being honest themselves, are considered to be easy marks by those who are dishonest. Those who make a business, a very profitable business out of the confidence of others, and what seem to be deals of a very simple and ordinary nature. But you may be sure that no matter how simple and ordinary the confidence man's racket may seem, he knows his victim's ignorance of its details. And he has implicit faith in his sucker's carelessness about checking up on him until it's too late. We'll call this case accidentally on purpose, because that's just how it happened. But bear in mind that it never would have happened at all if the people involved had been careful. It all started on a moonlit summer evening. This is not a brand new car, but it's new to the couple in it because Johnny Conway just bought it this afternoon. He's a nice boy, Johnny, and his fiancee, Sue Bailey, is a lovely girl. Johnny bought this car for their honeymoon. They're going to be married tomorrow. How do you like the car, hon? Oh, I think it's just perfect, Johnny. Uh, I don't know where we'd have gotten such a bargain. And it's all ours, all paid for. It's got plenty of pep, too. Be careful, Johnny. Oh, don't worry, honey. I'm only going 55. Johnny! The brakes don't work! Johnny put his foot on the brakes. Nothing happened. Oh, why doesn't the doctor come in and tell me how Johnny is? You don't think Johnny... No, no, that's not it. The nurse said he'd be in just as soon as he finished his examination. So while we're waiting, why don't you tell me the rest of the details? All right. Now, Miss Bailey, just what did you mean by nothing happened when your boyfriend stepped on the brakes? It was horrible. There were no brakes at all. I see. You were forced to come out of that wreck alive. That car was completely demolished. You know, Miss Bailey, if fellows like your boyfriend would have their cars checked periodically, we'd have a lot less accidents. How was Johnny to know about the brakes? He only bought the car this afternoon. The salesman said that it had just been through their shop and was in perfect mechanical condition. He just bought it today from a dealer? Down on Main Street. The salesman told him that all their, sh their cars are reconditioned from bumper to bumper. Before they're put up for sale. A dealer, huh? Would you excuse me a minute? I want to make a call. How's Conway, Doctor? Oh, he's going to be all right. Fracture of the left arm and deep gashes around the head. Of course, he's lost too much blood, but uh, he's pretty healthy. He'll make it. I hope so. He's got a fine girl in there. Mm -hmm. Mary, I have a call to make. All right, to use your phone? Help yourself, Sergeant. Thanks. The cliff side. Brakes failed. And the girl claimed her friend just bought the car this afternoon. Do you think he bought a dog? <laughs> yeah, and a real shaggy one. It was dealer sold and represented to be in perfect condition. I can't make a complete inspection until daylight, but from what I could see tonight, it has all the earmarks. How are the boy and girl? Well, he's much worse than she is, but the doctor says both make it okay. All right, Tom. Finish your investigation. I'll be down in the morning. Thanks. All officers had been alerted to double-check accidents where there was any doubt about a car's ability to perform as it should. There had been too many dogs on the highways lately. A dog is a car and name only. Actually, it's a rebuilt pile of junk held together, literally in some cases, with tape and rubber bands. Johnny Conway's car, for example. 
Oh, I know it looked like a good car on the outside. But that's the way a dog always looks. Good on the outside. But underneath, anything can happen. A bent frame, even cracked and strained to the breaking point. Brake bands worn down to the shoes, or no bands at all, just shoes. There are a hundred things that can be wrong with a car that a new paint job will cover up until it's sold. But when it gets out on the road, well, a new paint job didn't keep Johnny Conway from running into a truck. So therefore, it could only be suspected that Johnny's new car was really an old dog. So I decided to visit the boy at the hospital early the next morning. Morning, Captain Braddock. Hi, Mary. I thought you were on the night shift. I am, but my relief hasn't shown up yet. I'm going to have a talk with that girl. Say, I understand you had a 901 last night. The boy's name is Conway. That's right. He's fortunate to be alive. Do you want to see him? Yeah. Second door on the right. Better knock before you go in. His girl's in there. And they're in love. Okay, Cupid, I will. Come in. Johnny Conway? Yes. My name is Braddock. I'm with the Racket Squad. Racket Squad? Yes, I'd like to talk to you about that car you bought. Well, I don't suppose there's much to talk about. The brakes failed, but I, I guess that was just my tough luck. Maybe. But it might have been a lot more than just tough luck. I'm afraid I don't see what you mean. Oh, excuse me. This is my fiancée, Sue Bailey. How do you do, Miss Bailey? How do you do? We were going to be married today. We bought a car. We were going to drive to Arizona for our honeymoon. That's too bad, Johnny. But it could be a lot worse, a lot worse. I know. All I have to do is read the daily papers to see how fortunate we were. Where did you buy your car, Johnny? Well, at a used car lot down on Main Street. It was called Square Deal Danny's, the working man's friend. I remember we were laughing at the sign. <laughs> These signs killed me. <laughs> Honey, look at that one. Why, it's just what we're looking for. Oh, Johnny, don't you think it'll cost too much? Well, what's the harm in asking? Remember, money talks and we've got cash. <laughs> say, uh, say, mister, uh, what's the price on this sedan? Son, you don't want this car at any price. Well, why not? It, it looks like just what we're looking for. The things about this car... Hey, Pete. That... Take it over to the garage. Danny's looking for you. Okay, I was just going. You're in the market for a car, eh? Well, you've come to the right spot. We just put this baby on the line about an hour ago, and believe me, she won't last the afternoon. Been a couple of people in asking about it already. Well, gee, it sure is a beaut, don't you think so, hon? Well, I think it's very nice, Johnny, but I'm afraid it's going to be more than we want to pay. Oh, young lady, be optimistic. My boss is the working man's friend, and I know we can get together on a deal. Of course, it's a 41, best model they put out, you know, and runs like a clock. And the rubber's almost brand new. Oh, we'd have to have good tires. You see, we're getting married tomorrow, and we want to drive to Arizona on our honeymoon. Getting married, huh? Well, congratulations. We'll just have to get together on a deal you can handle. Call it our wedding present. Uh, what kind of a down payment can you make? Oh, we'd like to pay cash. I've got the money right here in my pocket. Well, in that case, let's get over to the office, and I'll tell Danny about it. When he hears about the wedding and the cash, I know we can give you a square deal. But, Johnny, that old man started to say something about us not buying this car. Do you know what he meant? Oh, you mean old Pete? Oh, he'd give anything to have this job. He's one of the grease monkeys around here, and he's had his eye on it ever since we put it in the shop. You see, Danny won't put a car on the line unless it's been going over thoroughly from bumper to bumper. And Pete knows this baby's in A1 condition. Oh, I see. Oh, don't blame him for that, honey. You just have to wait till another good one comes along. Is this a local car? Local? Well, this car hasn't been out of the city limits. And just look at that paint job. Original. And it's only got 8,500 actual miles on it. Well, this car's hardly broken in. Oh, gosh, honey, can you imagine that? It's, it's practically a new car. It does seem very little. Well, that's because of the owner. You see, this belonged to an old maid school teacher who just drove it to school and back. No, fool. Well, absolutely. This car hasn't been driven over 40 miles an hour. No, sir, you'll have to pipe more or less break it in yourself. They say, there's Danny. He's just getting ready to leave the lot. Uh, suppose we go over and close the deal, huh? All right. Fine. Well, you know the rest of the story, Captain Braddock. I picked up Sue last night and we went for a drive. I'm afraid you were played for a sucker, Johnny. I'm sure this accident happened on purpose. But why would anyone want to do us harm? Oh, it's not you or Johnny. What I mean is, I'm positive the car was misrepresented to you. 
Probably a total wreck before you got it and rebuilt to look like new. Why, those dirty rats. Wait till I get my... Don't feel too badly about it, Johnny. Believe me, you're just one of many. But tell me, how did you get the car insured? Why, why, I didn't. Sue mentioned it to Danny, but he said not to worry about it because the car was in such good shape. Well, it was okay with me because I was a little short on cash and wouldn't have had enough for our honeymoon. If ever you car drivers would learn that insurance is your cheapest form of protection, you wouldn't get yourself into these messes. Well, I, I don't see how insurance would have kept me from getting this broken arm. Well, that's where you're wrong. If your car is the dog I think it is, a reputable insurance company wouldn't have insured the car. But you didn't, and that's that. Oh, by the way, did Square Deal Danny send in the ownership certificate for transfer? Why... No, he didn't. Johnny, remember? You told him that you wanted to wait until we returned from our honeymoon to send it in. That we were driving across the state line and, and you wanted to keep proof of ownership with you. That's right, Sue. I, it's in my wallet. I'd like to take this with me, if you don't mind. Why, sure. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to find out who that old maid really was. Goodbye, Johnny Sue. I'll keep you posted. Thank you very much, miss. I'm glad those young people are going to be all right. Thank you. Well, just a minute. Captain Braddock's out now. You can go in and see them. Oh, thank you. Some other time. I've got to be getting along now. Well, that's strange. What's strange, Mary? That old man that just left. He sat in that chair for ten minutes, not saying a word. And I finally asked if I could help him. Then he wanted to know all about the Conway accident. What did he want to know? Oh, how it happened, were they badly hurt, and questions like that. I told him it was due to breaks. And then when you came out, I thought he might like to go in and pay them a visit. But he just walked off. I don't get it. I don't get it either. But I'm going to find out. Just a minute. I'd like to talk to you, if you don't mind. About what? Well, I understand you were inquiring how those two kids made out in that accident last night. I read about it in the paper this morning. I just wanted to see how they were getting along, that's all. Are you related to them? No. A close friend? No, I don't know them at all. I'd like you to meet those two kids. I think it'll help you get something off your chest. Come on. All right. Here's someone I'd like you to meet. Why? Well, you're the mechanic from the used car lot. Yes, that's right. He was outside asking about the both of you. He said he read about the accident in the newspapers. I think he has something he wants to tell us. I can't stand it any longer. I feel responsible for you young folks having that accident. Why don't you tell us all about it? I tried to tell him not to buy that car, but Porter wouldn't let me tell him. He sent me back to the garage. If they just listened to me, I knew that car. I'm a good mechanic. That car should never have been fixed up. But I'm old, and it isn't easy for an old man to get a job as a mechanic. But I'm strong, though. I'm just as strong as I was 20 years ago, only nobody believes me. When I tell them I've worked on the best of them, and I've built racing cars, they just say, go on, beat it, you're too old. But I've still got it up here, too. Still got it here. 30 years' experience. But I've got to eat, so I take this job fixing up wrecks for Danny. And he kept advancing me money so I couldn't quit. The car they bought was one of his wrecks. Why don't you start at the beginning and tell me about the car these kids bought? Well, it wasn't the first wreck I've doctored up for Danny, but it was the worst. Along about the first of the week, he sent me out to bring it in. It was in a junkyard out on the desert. Danny had picked it up for 50 bucks, and it wasn't worth 50 cents unless you bought it for scrap. A taxi cab that had been pounding those desert roads for years and then got tangled head on with a truck to boot. I've seen some bad ones, but this clunker was so bad I wasn't sure it was going to hold together till I could get it to the garage. But I finally made it, and Danny would jump me just as soon as I got out of the tow car. About time you showed up. What'd you do? Stop to go fishing? I'm sorry, Danny, but I had to take it slow. I'm not paying you to take it slow. Now get on this clunker first thing in the morning and run it through the mill. I want it on the line by day after tomorrow. Okay, Danny. So the next morning I have to get to work on that wreck, and it was bad. Very bad. 
After 85,000 miles over those desert roads, plus the final wreck, it kind of turned my stomach to think someone would buy that car and drive it on public highways. Here's an accident that found some place to happen. What do we do with it, Pete? Well, Danny says get her ready for the line by tomorrow, so I guess we'll have to. I just put a new battery in her and some gas. Get in there and start. Let's see what she sounds like. You think it's safe? Probably not. Shut her off! Brother, connecting rods are about ready to fly out the crankcase. See, you can, then fill her up with oil. And some 40 weight in the corner. Okay, you're the... We'll quiet them down for a few miles, but not for long. They're still gonna fly. Now she's full of oil. Water up. Good as she'll sound without new bearings in her. I bet you could throw your hat between those pistons and the cylinder walls. Or put her in gear and let's hear what the rear end sounds like. Those gears are about shot, Pete. I won't do it. I'm not going to wire this thing together with spit and glue. It's in too bad shape. I'm going to tell Danny. You're going to tell Danny what? Why, uh... I think this one should stay junk, Danny. Whoever buys it is liable to get killed. Look, you old coot, I don't pay you to think. I pay you to do what I tell you to do. However, if you feel that way about it, you can pay me back the money I've advanced you and get out of here. Oh, no, Danny, look, Pete didn't mean it. He's just a little upset. He'll fix this high enough, won't you, Pete? I guess I will. You bet you will. What's the matter with you? Are you trying to borrow trouble for yourself? It ain't right. This thing should be junk. Oh, look, Pete, if there are guys sucker enough to buy an iron like this, it's none of our business. They can went to it with their eyes wide open. Now, look, let's get on it before Danny gets back here and fires us both. Okay, Tommy. S.P. Johnson was ready to quit right then. He'd worked over too many of those irons, as they call them, and knew what potential killers they were. Well, in a moment, we'll wind up our case of accidentally on purpose tricks that can be used in covering up the defects in a wreck such as this one Pete was working on. Now, some of them I'd never even heard of, but he was good. He knew them all. Now, if this had been a legitimate overhaul, Pete would have pulled the rear end and put in all new gears. But that wasn't for Danny, the working man's friend. Not when there wasn't a shortage of cork. You see, by grinding up the cork and stuffing it in the differential housing, along with lots of heavy grease, it helped a lot as far as the noise was concerned. But it didn't help those worn, brittle gears. If a tooth broke off or those gears didn't mesh properly, that whole rear end would split apart like a ripe watermelon. Now, this little trick is as ingenious as it is deceptive. After all, when we can see by the speedometer that a car has only been driven a few miles, we're sure it's in good shape. Now, this wreck had been driven 85,000 hard miles. But when Pete finishes, the speedometer will read only 8,500. However, welding a cracked frame like Pete's doing now is an entirely different story. This cross member he's working on is one of the most important parts of the car. It literally ties the frame together. This one should never be welded because the metal is crystallized, which simply means it has become brittle and has lost its original strength. Probably snapped when this car had its final wreck. And unless replaced, will always be a killer waiting to strike at the next sudden twist in the road. But to replace it costs money. And that was not for Danny. Cut that thing off, will you, Tommy? What does it look like? Like a last year's bird's nest. It's a mess, Tommy. Well, those brakes have got to be relined. And look at that flexible hydraulic line that's been leaking. I know, but what can we do about it? Yeah, I thought so. That plate's cracked, too. It's got to be replaced. Oh, you know, Danny won't go for that. Well, Danny's got to go for that. that Danny's got to go for what? Well, Danny, uh... I said I've got to go for what? Well, it's this brake setup, Danny. The, uh, plate here is cracked. The hydraulic lines have got to be replaced, and it needs a reline job to... Shoe is right down to the rivets. Listen, you second-rate grease monkey. I don't care if they're worn through the rivets. All I want you to do is adjust them. And don't forget to regroup those tires. Take it away, Tommy, will you? Pete knew the tape he was putting around that hydraulic line wasn't going to help much. 
Those lines to the wheels are a car's lifelines. They hold the precious fluid, which means the difference between stopping in time or maybe death. Leaking as they were meant only one thing, a sudden emergency stop when the driver really had to throw his weight on the brake pedal and those lines would split open like an old piece of garden hose, which adds up to no brakes at all. And regrooving the old casings was also asking for it. It's okay to cut new grooves in a tire when there's plenty of tread left. Helps to make them non-skid. But when they're almost worn down to the breaker strip, you increase your chances of a blowout by about 80%. But a sucker doesn't know. And they look good. From then on, it was just a case of dinging out the dents, slapping on a coat of paint, and it was ready for the line. Yesterday, when you young people came in looking for a car, I tried to warn you, but I didn't have the courage. But later, after you'd driven off, I, I couldn't stomach it any longer. I, I told Danny I didn't care what he did to me for the money I owed him. I was through doing his dirty work. I guess it's too late now, but if there's anything I can do to help... There is. Come on, I want to meet Danny, the working man's friend. Yeah, I'd like to see him too, but I guess I'll have to wiggle my arms back in condition. You just stay where you are, Johnny, and save yourself for Sue. There's that salesman I was telling you about talking to that soldier. And there's Danny's car over there, so he must be here too. Fair enough. You two wait until I call for you. Mac, this car's never been driven over 40 miles an hour. You practically have to break it in yourself. The reason this car's in such good condition, it, it belongs to an old maid school, school teacher. teacher. What are you, a wise guy? Might be. The name's Braddock. I want to talk to you and your boss. Uh, Danny's not in right now. Look, why don't you come back later? I'm just about to close this deal. This deal is closed now. Look, soldier, this car that he claims belonged to an old maid school teacher is actually a rebuilt wreck that isn't safe to be on the highway. Now, go buy yourself a good used car from a reputable dealer. There are plenty of them around town. Gee, thanks, mister. I, I was just about to buy this old crate. And as for you, maybe someday you'll be my personal yard bird. All right, let's go see Danny. I got a hunch he's in now. Look, mister, I only work here. I, I have nothing to do with the condition the cars are in. I, I only sell them. Is that Danny? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's him. Oh, Lou, take charge of him, will you? You're going for a ride, all right, Danny, but not in this car. You ought to know better than try and stop one of your own wrecks. Come on. Well, Danny, the working man's friend, tried to bluster it through. But when we confronted him with Pete Johnson's sworn statement, the fight went out of him. We were able to convict him and his salesman on misrepresentation with intent to defraud. They won't be selling used cars for quite a while. And Pete is happy. He's working in the police garage, and they tell me he's an excellent mechanic. I had Johnny file a civil suit against Danny. And now Mr. and Mrs. Conway are driving around in an honest used car they bought from a reputable dealer. Now, fortunately, in the used car market, there are many reputable dealers and few Dannys. However, when you buy a used car, do this. If you don't know the reputation of the dealer, Get your own mechanic to examine the car first, before you buy. And when you do buy, have it insured immediately. The accident rate in the United States averages over 83 deaths a day. Don't you be the 84th. Because accidentally on purpose could happen to you. This case now, or rather the courts will. But there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember. There are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you.